Exeter enjoys a pivotal role in the geography of Devon. Situated at the head of the River Exestry, the city effectively divides the county into three parts, East, South and North Devon. Railways first reached Devon in 1844, when the Bristol and Exeter Railway, an associate of the Great Western Railway, opened its broad gauge line to Exeter St David's Station on the western outskirts of the city, on the flat plain of the River X. The Bristol and Exeter amalgamated with the Great Western in 1876, and just over a century later, in 1985, Exeter was the West Country Centre for the celebrations to mark 150 years since the foundation of the Great Western. In 1994, it would celebrate 150 years of its own railways, and this programme covers the Exeter railway system today, in the period between those two events. Today, Exeter is served by a regular high-speed service both to London and the North, using Intercity's HSTs, one of which is seen arriving at the north end of the station, passing over Red Cow Crossing, named after a local hostelry. Some trains in 1994 still remained locomotive hauled. This is an intercity class 47, heading the daily 1544 Plymouth to Derby, leaving St David's at 1646. With the old goods shed in the background, now let to industrial users, a pair of RES Class 47s leave with the parcels working. The leading locomotive is for insurance only. It runs light from Bristol to Plymouth, as the contract with Royal Mail includes heavy penalty clauses in the event of a locomotive failure. Exeter's main freight yards are situated behind St David's Station, but today are used only for the engineers and occasional staging of through services. For many years, Speedlink services ran from here, but were withdrawn in 1991. For a short while, Tiger Rail ran a substitute service, which is seen here, but sadly, it lasted only a short while, as the holding company ran into financial difficulties.
Riverside Yard runs for a mile or so towards Cowley Bridge Junction, where the main lines are joined. Here, an HST heads northwards from Exeter in April 1994. The River X has always been a problem for the railway, and 1993 was no exception to the long succession of flooding, which has closed the line just to the north of Cowley Bridge. On this occasion, trains had to be diverted via Honiton, as we'll see later. None of the original GWR intermediate stations now exists between Exeter and Taunton. The characteristic semaphore signals were due to be replaced in 1985, but still stood in that GWR 150 year, as the two preserved Castle Class 46As headed north at Helium Bradninch, one of the original stations. type of preserved locomotive is seen at Tiverton Junction as D200 passes on a rail tour. Tiverton Junction closed in 1986 and today is a flat area with just two running loops. For a while the signal box remained in a derelict state. Tiverton Junction was replaced in 1986 by Tiverton Parkway, a brand new station built alongside the junction of the M5 motorway with the then new North Devon Relief Road, the A361, which cuts directly across from here to Barnstable. With the closure of all the branches which once fed the X Valley in North Devon, Parkway Station is intended as the railhead for the entire area and is served by intercity Great Western and cross-country trains. This is one of the latter, a Sunday service, the 1410 Plymouth to Newcastle. The signalling control centre now extends beyond Tiverton Parkway through Taunton towards Bristol and Westbury, but we are now going to concentrate on the railways in the immediate environs of the city, served by its local trains. Exeter St David's didn't remain a terminus for long, as in 1846 the South Devon Railway opened. Like the Bristol and Exeter, this was broad gauge, and it ran from Exeter to Plymouth, with a branch to Tor Bay. Today, Class 150-2 Sprinters work local services based on Exeter, one of which is seen heading for the Tor Bay line.
Some freight still works from Exeter. This service ceased in late 1993 and was a trip from Riverside to Plymouth, carrying engineers and pelletised China clay traffic wagons. City Basin Branch is now closed, except for scrap traffic. The first station beyond St David's is St Thomas. This once boasted an overall roof, but today is a simple open structure, served by the 150 stroke twos. It provides a useful local amenity, especially for the adjacent supermarket. For many years, the English electric class 50 diesels were familiar on Western metals. A pair is seen on a special rail tour in 1991 towards the end of their reign at Exminster, once a station with passing loops on both sides of the main running lines. Expresses to the south and now in the hands of HSTs. From Powderham to Dawlish Warren, the main line runs alongside the River X estuary, and at Star Cross, a ferry service runs across to Exmouth on the eastern shore. Back in 1985, the GW150 steam specials brought everyone out. Steam was set to return in 1994 as part of the Exeter Rail Fair. Great Western chocolate and cream coaches still remain at Dawlish Warren, where the platforms are served by running loops. These coaches are used as camping coaches. The loops are used to allow expresses to overtake the local trains, as in this instance where a network southeast train from Paynton to London Waterloo calls at the station to allow following HST to pass. This is the 1445 Penzance to Paddington. It will arrive in London at 1945. The local, class 159, arriving at Waterloo just over an hour and a half later at 21.17, after reversing at Exodus St David's. From the lofty Langston Rock, just to the south of Dawlish Warren, a 47 heads north on a mixed freight in 1988, before the demise of Speedlink. Langston Rock marks the end of the X estuary and the beginning of the sea wall, one of Britain's most famous stretches of railway line. From Langston to Tynmouth, the railway is literally on the sea wall, most notably at Dawlish, where a series of tunnels pierce the rock outcrops. 
and Exeter bound class 150 braves the water as it approaches Dawlish station, well positioned in the centre of the seaside town. From above, another Class 50 is seen with a train of parcels vehicles carrying a traffic which was to cease in 1988, newspapers. The most famous railway landmarks is the Skew Bridge at Tynmouth, where the line leaves the sea wall and heads inland. Here we see a Class 47 heading north onto the sea wall. The Skew Bridge is seen from the other side as an NSE 159 on a regional railways working passes non-stop through Tynmouth station. Beyond Tynmouth, the line follows the Tyn Estuary, bridged at its widest point by Shalden Bridge. This is the southbound Friday's only 1335 Paddington to Penzance HST. Newton Abbott is an important junction and changed radically in the 1980s and the castles left in 1985 was virtually unchanged from steam days. Today HSTs work all trains, but if a power car fails, a locomotive has to help it. Before the changes were finished, Class 50 helps an HST towards Plymouth. Due to fierce gradients on the Plymouth line, it's considered inadvisable for an HST to operate on one power car only. A year later the semaphores had gone, but not the 50s. A pair is seen on Plymouth, on the left, in Torbay trains in 1987. The remains of the branch from Newton Abbott to Morton Hampstead were the scene of a railtor in 1993, when a pair of Class 37s visited Heathfield. The line is in use for oil traffic and China clay workings. The main line to Plymouth diverged from the Torbay line at Aller Junction until the re-signalling. 
Before its demise, a Class 50 on a parcels train heads past the box from Plymouth. The junction is now closer to Newton Abbott. For a short while in the mid-1980s, four-wheel rail buses were used for the extra local trains. Whilst in the West Country, these were known as skippers. They were unsatisfactory and were initially replaced by the standard diesel multiple units before the present Class 150-2 stroke sprinters took over. A signal box still stands at Tor, the first station on the branch, as 150240 calls on an extra central to paint and working at 1504 on April the 22nd, 1994. years earlier, a visiting Class 45, number 141, climbed through Tor with an enthusiast special. Tor was the original terminus for the Tor Bay Line, opening in 1848. until 1859 when the line was extended to Paynton as the first part of the Torbay and Dartmouth Railway. Today's Torquay station is set amongst the famous palm trees right alongside the main road on the seashore, very convenient for visitors to the resort. Two through HST services are provided daily on the branch to Newcastle, the 0833 Devonian and this the 1435 which is unnamed. Torquay once boasted a centre through road. The branch was originally broad gauge, but was converted in 1892 to standard gauge. Although the line continued beyond Paynton to Kingswear, that stretch is now the privately owned Paynton Steam Railway. The resort is now the terminus for mainline and local services. Here a 150 stroke 2 leaves for Exeter. Exeter's third railway was the North Devon Railway, built as a broad gauge line to Barnstable, but later to become a narrow gauge line owned by the London and South Western Railway, who also opened a main line from Crediton, Varro, Campton to Plymouth. Today, passenger services are confined to the Barnstable line, as through trains from Exmouth or Exeter Central using 152 stroke twos or class 153 single car units. The Oakhampton route is now used for freight only, being cut back to Meldon Quarry. A train of granite from the quarry is seen passing through Exeter St David's.
locomotives are provided by the engineers, whose distinctive yellow-topped Dutch livery adorns locomotives and wagons. Exeter Riverside Yard is now the domain of the engineers. The North Devon line diverges from the Great Western Main Line at Cowley Bridge Junction, crossing the River X on two single-track bridges, provided in 1964 to replace double-track spans previously in use. Passenger traffic on the line is marketed under the name the Tarka Line, as the Otter's story was based on the region. The line was once double track, but today Newton St Sires, the first station out from Exeter, has both platforms, but only one in use. This train is Exeter bound. Crediton was the first terminus of the North Devon Railway, and today boasts the first crossing loop on the Barnstable line and the junction for the Oakhampton line. Barnstable trains take the right-hand track, whilst the Meldon Quarry trains, up to three of which are booked daily, use the left-hand one, off which this train, double-headed by Class 33s, is coming. Passenger traffic was withdrawn from this line as late as the 1970s, although experimental passenger services were run in the mid-1980s. Locomotives for the Meldon trains have varied over the years. Class 37s replaced the 33s, and are today the most common machines on engineers' trains. The two lines are seen a little to the west of Crediton, as the first up train of the day, on a Sunday, the 1300 from Barnstable approaches. The appearance is an illusion, as it is no longer a double track main line, but two parallel single lines, the left hand track leading to Oakhampton and Meldon. junction for the two lines was just after Yeoford Station at Colford. Here the unique Class 50, repainted into rail freight colours, number 149 Defiance, brings a loaded Meldon stone train through Yeoford, where the only platform in use is alongside the Barnstable line.
The last line to reach Exeter was the London and South Western main line from Salisbury, which opened to Exeter in 1860, its Exmouth branch following a year later, and a connection to St David's a year after that, thus making the latter a true railway crossroads. The climb up from St David's to Central, renamed and rebuilt from Queen Street in the early 1930s, is at 1 in 37, always a problem in steam days which was re-enacted in 1993 when Tor Valley visited the line from London. For a long while, southern and western services were separate, but under British Rail, they were integrated. Diesel multiple units allowed trains to reverse at St David's to give through workings between Paynton and Exmouth. Here, an Exmouth-bound train ascends the 1 in 37. From the eastern end of the station, the general layout can be discerned. In steam days, two further tracks ran down the centre, as most trains either terminated here or split to serve the various southern lines beyond Exeter, known as the Withered Arm. This DMU is leaving one of the two bay platforms provided for Exmouth services. was opened in 1906 at St James's Park, a short distance beyond Central. Today it's only served by Exmouth trains, but it was provided as part of an LSWR scheme to create suburban traffic. It's close to Exeter's football ground. Exmouth Junction's signal box survives today, but controlling colour light signals over a single lead junction. Before these were provided, a skipper train is seen heading across the junction with an Exmouth branch train. Exmouth branch still boasts a crossing loop at Topsham, now remotely controlled from Exmouth Junction. The old box still remains unused. The branch has a half hourly service throughout the day, trains being the inevitable class 150 stroke 2s, with occasional 153s and some of the 158 air conditioned units used on a daily through train to Gloucester.
155 airstroke twos are supplied from regional railways fleet based at Cardiff. For some years, they have been outbased at Plymouth Lera, but during 1994, the old steam shed at Exeter St David's was to be rebuilt as a servicing facility for the local units. Regional withdrawing from Lera. The branch continues along the foreshore of the River X, with four intermediate stations. Exton has always been a single platform halt. Another halt was provided by British Rail to serve the commando base at Limpstone, but Limpstone Village still boasts the original station. The empty space for a crossing loop and second platform is clearly seen as an extra bound unit hurries through. Only every other train serves Exton and Limpston. Exmouth once boasted a large station with four platforms as a second branch fed the town via Budley Salterton. Today a single platform suffices and the rest of the old formation provides space for a relief road and parking for cars and buses. But the railway is still busy. On the old Southern or LSWR main line, Honiton has always been the terminus for local trains from Exeter. In times of trouble on the River X, the line has also seen the diversion of main line trains such as this Edinburgh-bound HST in the winter of 1993. The southern line was downgraded to secondary status in 1964 and much of it was reduced to single track, whilst branches and junction stations were closed. However, the line's fortunes slowly rose in the 1970s and 80s, the old Sidmouth Junction Station reopening as Finneton to serve a nearby housing estate. Today the line is run by Network South East, who have supplied modern air-conditioned Class 159 units for the services from Waterloo, seven of which call at Finneton on their way to Exeter. Wimple is one of the original stations on the line and has undergone changes recently. For many years it boasted a loop to serve the remains of its goods yard in the local cider factory. However, when that traffic ceased, the loop was taken out and the old down platform opposite the station entrance was used for all trains. Prior to the advent of the 159s, DMUs provided the local services to and from Honiton, whilst express services were handled by Class 50s and, latterly, Class 47s. With the introduction of the 159s, the line was modernised and the old up platform was extended to reach the running line, the old down platform and footbridge being removed. It seems odd that this West Country line should be served by Network South East. But from April 1994, with the imminent privatisation of British Rail, the train operating company for the line changed to the more appropriate South West trains. Double track is regained at Pinhoe, another reopened station. A 150 strokes 2 is seen running as empty stop to provide a Honiton to Exeter local working in the morning of April 22, 1994. After it passes over the level crossing, it will run onto the single track section to Honiton. 
From high above the tunnel in Exeter, the goods yards at Exmouth Junction can be seen as the westbound Class 50 approaches in its last year of operation. Exmouth Junction was the Southern's main goods yard and also boasted a massive steam shed until the 1960s. The goods yard survived until late 1993 as the area's principal coal concentration depot, but the traffic has now ceased. Old times are recalled again as the Southern Pacific Tor Valley leaves Exeter Central with a special for London in late 1993. These bullied design machines were the last regular steam power for the Southern. much interest as for steam was generated in the last years of class 50 haulage on the line. A panorama of the station is offered from the road bridges to the east. A small goods yard behind the station served as cement terminal until the late 1980s but all track except a short spur has now been removed. A memory of the freight traffic is seen as a pair of Class 37s climbs into the station with a coal train, the second engine banking up from St David's, as had happened for nearly all trains in steam days. Today the Class 159s dominate the route, but their progenitors, the 158 Express units, also appear at Central Station on regional railways trains. This is the unusual Bristol Temple Meads to Paynton train, which visits Central and returns to St David's before continuing on its way to Paynton. And so we return to St David's, hub of the system, to witness a Class 50 coming down the bank from Central. The trains over the Southern Line were restricted to a Waterloo to Exeter St David's service for many years, the intercity route being the official main line. However, in recent years, competition between Network South East and Intercity has grown, and a number of Waterloo services have been extended to Paynton, especially since the arrival of the 159s. On Sundays, the southern route provides the first through train from London. Final views of the present order on both Exeter's main lines. An HST heads west on the Great Western and is followed by a 159 climbing the 1 in 37 to Central and the Southern. Our thanks are due to British Rail staff for assisting us with the making of this programme. <laughs>